Hello and welcome Hi. to this week's Travel and Young, another week in a we're row. We're doing so good. It's because he planned everything and now we're a, on schedule. I have what's called a calendar. He does. This week, what we're going to talk about is five things. Five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five things we would change about America if we had magical powers. Yes, wave that wand. Now that we've lived in Denmark for six years now, about to be six, six years. years yes. Five things we change about America on this week's Travel and Young. <laughs> We're gonna talk about five, yes, five things, five things that we would change about America if we had the magic the magical powers. If we had the, <laughs> we had the wand, the, the wand that we could say wand. "Eagle Biggly Boo" or something, and then all <laughs> of a sudden things change. I don't know. I just I don't watch the Harry Potter stop. stuff. That's what they are. And then the, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. And then is like a, I didn't say it. I said "Iggity Biggity Boo," and then like a frog comes out of your <laughs> mouth or something like that. I don't know what it is. That's what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> This week on Traveling Young, as mentioned, and we're going to start with number five. We're going to count yes. backwards, and that's yours. That's mine, and I picked mass transit. Now, I know during if some of you watched uh, our YouTube short series that we did back in December for the Advent Calendar, one of them was the train systems and public transportation. And under mass transit, I'm including, you know, regular trains, light rail, buses, uh, basically anything that a whole bunch of people can get on and then transport to another place. Um, oh, that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh. Um, I think it's really important because I, I think a lot of people commented that they feel like the public transport here in, uh, in Denmark isn't that great. But we come from a country where there's often places when you get out of major cities, there are cities where you might be three, four hours from the closest major city with no public transport, no way to get around the rest of your state. The town that I grew up in uh, at the time, I don't think we had any public transportation. You had to have a car to get around. And I think that is extremely limiting for a whole lot of people. There are a lot of people who can't afford to have a car. They just don't have the means to. And then that really affects them economically. They can't get a job. They can't stay healthy by being able to go out and see a doctor. Um, you know, they can't get their kids to school maybe. And, and it just affects you so much by not being able to get around. And I think we're so fortunate to be able to live in a country where it is super easy for us to get around. And I know that even in Uland, it's not the best, but it's still miles better than what we had in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely select cities like D.C., New York, Boston. There's yeah. there's subways Chicago and even, trains, yeah. although they're kind of expensive. Well, D.C. is expensive. Yeah. Uh, but you get a bit out of there and you're a bit out of luck. Yeah. You have to have a car to get around. Yeah, exactly. All right. So number four. Number four. four this is yours. One of my favorite topics, digital <laughs> security. And I just still can't comprehend how in America... It's, it, you know, I, let, let's just say, maybe it's, let's just say it's not even the government that creates some kind of universal way to manage authentication across every app you have. It could be a private company that does this. It doesn't have to be the government. Mm -hmm. But yet, Chase Bank, Bank of America, all these places, which I still have accounts at, have different username and logins. Yeah. And there's not a really good universal way of, of, of handling authentication, which is just ripe for the fraudsters and the scammers mm -hmm. out there to take advantage of people. And it's insane. As I mentioned on the NIMID, NIMID video, many, 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 it feels like many, many, many years ago. ago. I mentioned this and I still hold true. I mean, if you think about it, in America, you could have the same, you, nothing's to prevent you from having the same username and login for everything that's important to you. <laughs> and then you one day decide to like get on tickets.com and buy a concert to, <laughs> ticket to something, use the same Username yeah. and password, that gets hacked. And all of a sudden, somebody has access to what you use for everything. Now, obviously, people shouldn't do that, but there's nothing to prevent them mm -hmm. from doing that. And there's no universal way to handle digital security. And guess what? I'll tell you a secret. Everything is going to be digital if it's not already in your life. <laughs> yeah. And it's critical for this to be mm -hmm. secure. And I just, just wish there was some way in America to improve this. And I highly respect and appreciate the fact that we have a good way to authenticate um, all of our digital lives here in Denmark. I appreciate that. And I think that needs to change in America. If I had that 
Bibbly bobbly. No, I said iggly. Iggly, iggly biggly. I need to go back. I don't remember what I said. All right. That's it for me. Number three (laughs) is yours. Number three is not just universal health care, but actually universal health records. I think this was something that was mind blowing to me when we came here. The, The ability to go to a doctor and then if you need to go to a specialist, um, if you need to go someplace else, they have access to all of your health records. You don't have to transfer anything. You don't have to call one doctor's office and get them to fax over the copies of your records to the other doctor's office and have the doctor sign off on it. Um, I, it's even with pharmacies. I can go to any pharmacy in the country here in Denmark and pick up my prescriptions. I can't do that in the US. My my prescriptions were at a single pharmacy and if that wasn't around, I had to call them and they would f- transfer again the prescription to a different pharmacy. And then when I was back at my regular one, I would have to have the new pharmacy transfer it back to my pharmacy. It just made absolutely no sense. Maybe it's improved since we've been gone. I don't know. It was just a nightmare. And and I think of those emergency situations where it would be so helpful to have your full health history available to your doctors at, at just the touch of a button. And it boggles my mind that we don't have that in America. So what you're, I want to make sure I understand. So you're saying if I'm in a car accident, yeah. And like, let's say my, I'm right-handed. My right arm is severed. No, it's, <laughs> let's hope not. You don't. You don't think I should have to fax somebody? No, my I think you records? should call your doctor first and first, make sure. Well, no, but then I'd use transfer. this. Oh, that's you know, true. Oh, no. And that we, as discussed, that's like off on the side of the road. And do you okay? Well, I mean, that seems really the right way to do things. I think in a in a true capitalist environment you should be able to shop for everything even when you're in a crisis and you can't even who wants to share information i mean i think i'd be super lucid at that point too i mean i wouldn't be in (laughs) shock at all i I could just like openly disclose whatever i need to um yeah all right so number Number two two. is it's you uh, basically the higher education system in general but certainly the cost of the higher education in general so you know in denmark in a lot of countries like public education is is continues beyond high school age as you go into a university Mm. and that doesn't happen in America. They kind of like want to shoo you out as quickly as they can. And it's ridiculously expensive. Um, I had traveling prohibitively expensive traveling for work recently with people um, from the U S and they were talking about this because they had kids about to go into school and telling me, and it's just like, I think even in the last few years, it's gone up in price. It's crazy. I mean, it's unfortunate because having a well-educated society is good for the economy. It's good for everybody. Having a system that has all kinds of barriers to entry, so most people can't even go to school or can't afford to. When they mm. come out of school, they have to work for years to pay off their debt. Is just not great for society as a whole, but yet that's how it is in America. And I think that's just really unfortunate. We were lucky. I was lucky that my parents yeah, uh, mine did as helped well. me go to school. I paid for my graduate degree myself, but it wasn't... I was working full time at that point at a good job. So it wasn't a massive, massive burden. Plus, I think it's probably like a ton more expensive now, like 16 <laughs> years later or 17 years later since I did it. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really unfortunate. And if you have a couple kids, you might be struggling Out of luck. just to have your kids to be able to go to school to hopefully like the general. By the way, this is this is the general American dream concept mm-hmm. and, and is what I've always thought of myself is. You want to improve everything from generation to generation. You want to have better rules, better laws. Everybody's like yeah. improving. Society's improving. I feel like I should be doing better than my parents who then should have done better than their parents for all the years of sacrifice. And and that becomes very difficult when you reach a point where it's almost impossible for yeah. people to get an education beyond high school. And that's just unfortunate. And that's something that I would change if given the magic wand. Yeah. All right. Number one, I think we're doing good on time. This we have a timer. <laughs> we do, but it uh, could go down the fifth, tubes right uh, now. Yeah, yeah. No, this is we, number no, one. Number this is one. our fifth. Yeah. I almost said fifth because I think it's our fifth is week it? in a row doing a video. <laughs> That's what I think the five means. And maybe it's could be four. I've lost track. This is number. It's one. been so many weeks in a row. I can't even remember how many. So that's a good thing. That's good. Number one, though, number one is uh, very. This is where we get on the edge oh, of no. controversy. <laughs> we're gonna um, try to get through this and not be. Religion Bad. and politics. Mm. Religion and po- I'll, I'll just say a few things first since I'm already talking. Um, 
Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, w- the division between church and state is a fundamental part of how America was founded. Yeah. They were really, you know, the founding fathers were trying to get away from, you know, uh, the the Church of England and how they ruled, mm, <laughs> you yeah. know, based laws and tried it's to the rule The whole everything. reason we didn't have a king. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and but yet, but yet now today, um, there's almost a litmus, litmus test for um, how and what people believe as politicians in America. Yeah. They have to openly talk about their religious beliefs in order to be elected as part of their process. And I have high, high respect for European countries where religion is not discussed by politicians. I believe it's something that's private. Right. Obviously, it influences decisions I make, what I feel, um, but it should not dictate laws and define how laws are made. And a big part of this is I believe that uh, Christianity, specifically in the U.S., has kind of started to hijack the concept of morality yeah. as yeah. if other religions or a non-religious person doesn't have the capacity to be morally correct. Um, but in reality, there's like a fundamental set of like human things that are tied to morality. And that's what law should be built mm. on that everybody abides by. But then when you get past that into some very specific things, <laughs> it should not be something that gets into the law. And most countries yeah. that allow their public policy to be dictated by religious beliefs uh, have some problems. Yeah. And that's something that I would change, religion and politics. So you have your own views, too, which is similar, but you may <laughs> well, articulate think, it differently I think, than me. I but. think, yeah. So I struggle with this, and I know people comment all the time that I don't talk enough in videos and talk dummies. But I think in this case, it's hard for me to not get, honestly, like viscerally angry um, about the way that things are going in terms of how pervasive what I feel are, are more fundamentalist uh, religious beliefs in our politics. You see it everywhere. It is in city councils. It is in state legislatures, the federal court system, the national, um, you know, in, in our legislature, in our Supreme Court. Um, I think it is something that is, you know, it just flies in the face of, of what we are as a country and what we've built ourselves on as a country. And, and I think it's really unfortunate. And I, I hope that you know at some point um you know the voice of the more moderate voices can raise up and start getting those kind of more moderate candidates into into running for office but right now it's just in a really kind of scary place for me and it just reinforces that i'm i'm glad i'm here because i really respect how how it is here in denmark that um it is kind of a private thing and i just want to make it clear we have no problem with people who are religious this is nothing against religion we are not anti-religion in any way uh but i'm very much anti-religious based laws so um i think that's where i draw the line when we start letting our religious beliefs dictate laws that then directly affect people's access to health care you know they're banning books they're telling people who they can and can't be in a relationship with i draw the line there and that's where i'm gonna stop because i'll keep on going well i think it's more important <laughs> where it, where, it influ- where that those beliefs influences people's lives who don't believe yes. the same thing yeah um in a way that isn't nece- even detrimental to society yeah. Like, you know, really somebody's personal scary. beliefs defining how somebody else should be living, happy or not, even though it has no influence over them. I mean, yeah. it's just, uh, I, I can't, I can't understand that. And that is something I have a problem with. And there's a, yeah. there's a big history and a lot of things out there about, I mean, it's down to, I mean, the political, uh, like the whole presidential election is just now starting. So we'll see what yeah. comes out of this. But in previous elections, I mean, there are candidates that have campaigned within churches, you know, I mean, it's yeah. so to the point where candidates or pastors are directly suggesting that those in their congregation should vote for specific people. I mean, that that's just an infringement on mm-hmm. how pop, the political system should work and, and, and religion should work. And I mean, it's just it, it's it's something that we have problems with, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's all the way down to school boards and stuff yeah. like it's it's just really pervasive. Yeah. And I think it's. Something to change. <laughs> that is the number one thing that we would change is let's get, yeah. let's separate and decouple people's religious beliefs from their ability to govern. Those yeah. should be two separate things. I don't care and I don't want to know. You can think and believe whatever you want. Just don't Freedom openly, <laughs> don't openly talk about that and suggest changing laws to specifically yeah. match your own beliefs that may not be the same as mine. Yeah. And that's a problem. So there you go. That's where we're going to stop. 
Uh, now I'm like out of breath. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think. What are what are one, two, three, four? Some people may put yeah. fifteen things that they would change about the U.S. If you could, we're very interested to hear what you think. Yes. But with that, we're gonna say adios, Bye. goodbye.